Hello everyone, uh, this is Nihal. Thank you for joining today. Uh, this particular subject that we are going to talk about, which is sustainability for designing um, businesses and uh, the digital products that we consume. Uh, this subject um, has been in uh, our minds for a long time, but um, I never really came across uh, any talks or um, any subjects which I could dive deep into um, specifically for product design. And I felt ADP List is a good platform to sort of start uh, getting into. And um, I, I, I thought before we get into it, let's just, you know, quickly understand uh, what's the need and, you know, why are we even talking about this? Um, this sort of came in <clears throat> specifically when I was working with uh, um, a company based in Singapore, um, Ulam. Um, so about a couple of years back, they uh, requested us that, you know, uh, we work on a couple of applications that they have around um, um, farmers and um, how we can basically help uh, improve their livelihood. Um, that's in Indonesia. So uh, while that was happening, so lame. My headphones don't work. Okay, I'm just gonna mute everyone. All right. Um, so let me continue. So while we were working on that. Um, I realized that uh, the problems that we have are much larger and uh, what Ulam specifically was focusing on towards was the UN's goals, um, the sustainability development goals, which is about uh, um, ending poverty, um, fixing climate change. And um, uh, we were basically helping out with a small piece. And then um, <clears throat> along with that came in a um, much larger problem that if we have to solve these things, um, how, can we, how can we help people? Um, just a second. Let me mute everyone who's joining in. I'm sorry about that, guys. Oops, um, Liz, I'm not able to find that option. Okay, all right. I think that should be good. All right. Yeah, I think we should be good now. <clears throat> so um, let me continue. So um, I was talking about uh, how we were um, pulled in by Olam and uh, uh, we had to basically solve this problem of not just creating an application for farmers, but at the same time help um, go towards the larger UN goals. And um, about, about a couple of months back, uh, um, I met Don Norman as well. And uh, we were talking about uh, designers' role um, and how they can contribute towards problems that are larger than just you know, um, the boundaries of the pixels. So well, when all these things were like sort of boiling up, um, that's when I felt that I think uh, I need to spend more time uh, in the, into this subject, and uh, that's when I reached out to ADP List as well. That you know, maybe we can talk about um, this topic. And then um, my friends over here, um, Liz, whom we'll introduce um, in detail. We have Liz, um, <clears throat> Tracy, and Rod who joined me um, on this subject. So since the fact that we tag ourselves as problem solvers, uh, this is one of the biggest problems that we have uh, in our generation. And what are we doing about it? Um, and how can we basically make things better while we continue to, to do our work? So thank you so much for showing interest in this topic and stepping up. Um, and uh, today we'll talk about those things in detail. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself and then pass it on. Um, I am Nihal. Uh, I head the team at Moondraft Innovation Labs. I've partnered with a few companies for digital transformation. Um, and uh, I mean, I myself, um, uh, I try to spend most of my time 
apart from my work into uh, cooking. Uh, I love that thing a lot. And um, it's just one way to sort of come a little closer to nature. Um, so we'll talk about uh, how we, you know, how we all can take actions and understand the subject a little bit better. But with that, let me um, uh, invite Liz, who is our next um, co-host. And uh, Liz, if you can please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. This is going to be a fun topic. I think we'll get into some good stuff. But um, I'm Elizabeth Alley. If you haven't met me before, I'm the founder and instructor of Designer App School, where I teach UI UX and mindful design and interaction principles. Um, and so I've been practicing product designer for about 13, going on 14 years now. And you know, just designing apps and interfaces um, for startups and, and large companies, both on the B2B side and on the B2C side over here in Silicon Valley where I'm based. And um, I'm also um, building my own startup. On top of that, you might have seen my YouTube channel where I create tutorials uh, all about UI and UX and mindfulness, and I run a mindful design community. And so, yeah, you know, this is a really um, a special topic that's close to my heart. And this is a really great company that we're in. And I'm very much looking forward to all the stuff that they have to share with us because some of, the, um, you know, our co-hosts have been really going deep into the sustainability practices for a long time. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how we all think about it and apply it to UX. So thanks. I think you're muted, Nihal. Next we have... Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, next we have Tracy with us. Uh, Tracy, you wanna go ahead? Sure. Um, hi everyone, my name is Tracy Dai. I'm very happy to be here and share my experience designing for uh, sustainable products. Uh, I am currently working as a product designer at a company startup called Flexport. Um, we are headquartered in San Francisco. We are a tech platform that enables um, brands to move their freight around the world. And uh, I am currently leading the design effort at flexport.org, which is the social impact arm of Flexport. Uh, I am currently working on products that helps company to achieve their sustainability goals through technology. Uh, the features that I've been working on, including a carbon calculator that helps users to understand their emission uh, and offer ca our carbon offset uh, and reduction programs to our clients. Um, previously, I've been working at Adobe on some marketing automation products. Um, I am a amateur landscape photographer when I'm not uh, working. That's why I really care about nature and want to uh, bring sustainability and enable companies to have those capabilities to do sustainability initiatives um, through technology. Thank you, Tracy. Next, we have uh, with us Rod. Uh, Rod, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Nihal, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Acevedo. I'm here in New Zealand, far, far away from the rest of us, from the rest of you guys. Uh, it's just a pleasure to be here, to be honest. I feel honored to just be sharing knowledge and the stuff we have working in the last time to just improve like, the footprint and then be like more sustainable business. I consider myself a business driven designer. So that means like pretty much like a very focused interest strategy and the customer experience of our clients. Uh, I love that kind of like approach and I think it's just very clear. It's just very good to have like those stuff clear, uh, very clear. Uh, my work pretty much is about like structural and complex systems. And that is pretty much like focus in like challenge in, in healthcare, fitness, and then also a few services industries that is like B2B and B2C. Uh, in terms of like design team, I like to think like we have a, uh, um, holistic approach uh the company i'm working on that is journey digital in new zealand uh, because we would like to like think like the holistic approach is like kind of like have like a sustainable design team that is able to just thrive in their practice as well also so before, to close, before to close i would like to ask a question for all uh, the speakers here uh, and it's pretty much i would like to ask you to just share a little bit about you if you are a kitchen utensil which kitchen you tell us here you will be? So first, Nihal, you go first. <laughs> I've been thinking about it, Rod, and uh, it's it's extremely difficult. But probably I will go for maybe maybe a walk, given the fact that I'm extremely restless. 
I keep tossing things around um, and uh, multiple things going on. Probably that's how things have been for me in the last couple of years, given the fact that um, the company I'm working for, um, the design team has grown drastically to about, I think we'll be close to a hundred designers now. So my team is extremely large with tons of things coming in. So yeah, maybe probably work. Um, um, and maybe we can pass it on to Liz. Liz, what do you, what do you think uh, you would be? This is a funny question. Rod proposed that we all pick what kind of kitchen utensil we would be. And I thought that was hilarious just as an icebreaker. But I had my answer right away. If you guys have seen The Matrix that um, don't try and bend the spoon because it's not the spoon that bends, it's your mind. So um, oh. that's just... <laughs> It's a fun little quote if you guys have ever heard that before. But yeah, I think it's it's this concept of um, kitchen utensil can kind of be a vessel for anything you want it to be. And I think a spoon is a good vessel for carrying things around. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> How about you, Tracy? Awesome. Uh, if I were to become a utensil, I would pick um, wine opener um, because it's sharp. It also uh, brings joy. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Rod, what about you? Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for your answers. Um, I would say, uh, I would think I'm like a nutcracker. Actually, I think I'm a nutcracker because I have a reason for that. Because when you have an ad, I'm the nutcracker and I'm just trying to find the crack and I just try to go into it. And then when I get like one layer in, I just start like finding another one and another one till I get to the core and I get into the main challenge. That's awesome. <laughs> um, I was just asking the chat if they will go ahead and drop in what kitchen utensil that they think that they would be and why as well. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. Um, I think I'm gonna start sharing my screen since I'm- Yes, Rod, please go first. ahead. Give me one sec. Um, Cool, so the first step we're gonna talk now is about like setting like the right foundations about like sustainability. Uh, I think like we all have like different um, perceptions about sustainability and then that happened as well when we start like uh, having this conversation with the rest of the team with Liz, Tracy and Niho. We all have like different conceptions and, and then it's just quite kind of like a weird concept. Uh, because we don't know what actually sustainability means. I mean, like if you go to like the dictionary and trying to look for, it's more about like saving resources and then you will come up with this kind of like very weird definition that actually they are not suitable for like design or they are not suitable for like digital products or like for teams because sustainability can transfer to all kind of like levels. So for today, I think like the first step we're gonna do uh, guys is we're gonna do a quick exercise and I would like you to invite you all to participate and be part of it. And for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take everyone into a mirror board. And inside of the mirror board, there are like a few rules I would like to share with you before to move ahead. So the first one is you're gonna find a column on the left with all the post-its. And then pretty much you just need to just grab one of the post it You can copy and paste, or you just can drag it into the white area. Just very, very simple. Um, you just can drag one and just can drag one. And then actually you can start typing what is your conception about like sustainability. And it could be like anything. There is no wrong answers. You are like very, very welcome to write whatever you want to. So pretty much what we're gonna do now is you pick one of the post-it from the left column, you just drag it into the right side or you copy and paste it, and then you write as many as you want to. Uh, for this exercise, we're gonna set something about like three to four minutes. Uh, at least already paste the, the mirror board. So pretty much you can just find the URL here or just go to that one in the chat here in the Zoom call. So what I'm gonna do now is I will start sharing my uh, mirror screen. So I'll stop sharing this one and I will take you into the mirror and I will see you all there. Before you start typing, just please wait for a minute before you start like writing your ideas and we're gonna wait for the rest of the team to just uh, come here.
So I think we're gonna like we're gonna leave like something like more like 30 seconds to everyone to jump in. Cool, I can see like more people coming. 36 people, 37, six, cool. So what we're gonna do now is three, nine, 40, yeah, cool. So what we're gonna do now is I will set like three minutes and a half, and then you have like the chance to write like as many ideas you want to for um, your ideas about sustainability and what sustainability means for you. I love how this board looks right now. It's wild. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, we have like 52 so people. <laughs> Amazing. We have like 52 people interacting. That's pretty cool, guys. Just write the, as many as you want to. I love the answers coming in too about utensils. <laughs> <laughs> I like so the spork. That's great. <laughs> So we're gonna add more here. If you want to get posted, just if you want to change the color, just feel free to do it. Oh, Katarina, you can join to the board. Um, I will try again the link to you. Sorry guys, I will start like grouping through a few of your post-its to just make a, a pile. So we are talking about the same topic. So it seems like everyone kind of like, there are like a few good ideas here and we are almost finished. Three, two, one, and freeze. No more ideas, guys. Um, okay, so we're gonna discuss a few ideas we have here and I think they are very interesting to just kind of like acknowledge. Um, there are a lot of people that write about like green energy and then the circular design, but it's a very interesting concept. And uh, when we're talking about like circular design, about like try to keep like the 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 circular designs to try to keep like the focus on what we use and be like reusable. Uh, also, we have like another interesting topics like he, here, like about like um, let me share. about. about people talking about like more like renewable energy or like plastic. So those are like a good practices uh, we can do like in our day to day. That's like very, very interesting. Uh, people say like no more like no quick fashion, buying less stuff. Uh, I think like there are like two kind of perspectives here I'm seeing. It's like one, there are like people that put like good practices and stuff we can do to just improve like our day to day and just kind of like uh, try to support um, a sustainable kind of like life. And another one is more like about like processes like circular system or like trying to be like, em like empathy with the environment. Um, there is like very interesting, like people start like talking about like mindfulness 
uh, that is like very interesting or like coexisting with the world and the in the in the world we live um eating less meat like good practices as well um i would like to ask liz what do you think about like mindfulness i know i think it's so great that i've seen a lot of this coming up um i see over here let me see um I saw this one, consciousness, mindfulness, consideration, empathy. I love these. This is all about mindset stuff, right? Conscientiousness. Yeah. This is great. Um, coexisting, balance, harmony. This is definitely some things we're going to talk about a little later in, in, the, uh, in the talk. So this is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you guys for yeah. sharing all of these things. And definitely feel free to take a, take a screenshot, share this around, you know, um, let people know what... Uh, what our concepts of sustainability are here amongst us designers yeah yeah that's pretty cool um tracy what do you think about like circular system and the circular design as well because there is a lot of people talking about like green energy and i think like you your vision will be like something good to share at this point yeah actually um so I am a big uh, advocate of circulation economy, um, and uh, our company is also a good supporter of that. Um, so a lot of companies today have a lot of excessive uh, inventory that is stocking up their uh, warehouses. And there are also that people who are in need that needs those kind of goods. So uh, with our system, we match those uh needs and uh, demand together so that those I items don't just sit idle in a warehouse, they are actually getting into the hands of whoever is needing it. Um, I think as a designer who is creating this platform, um, a lesson for me is um, when we are uh, continuously like buying stuff, we need to be mindful that everything we do has an environmental impact. Um, and we need to really be mindful of um, do we really need that? Is there like more, are we really uh, needing to create so, so much impact? Um, is there any ways we can uh, be more mindful uh, to contribute to this circulation economy, not just as designers, but also as human beings? Yeah, that's very interesting. As you mentioned, like every decision we take actually takes like an impact on this society and then kind of like implies that also it's going to have a consequences a consequence in the next step in the chain. Um, also, I would like to ask um, Nihal about like, there are people talking about like elastic structure and then pretty much like no, fashion, no fast fashion. Can you share your thoughts about like these uh, post-its here, Nihal as well? Absolutely, Rod. So the aspect that we talk about fast fashion is 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 really uh, taken off in the last few years. And see, if you look at it, um, uh, I'm anyway going to talk about how the pillars really matter, where economic is an important pillar to be considered, uh, because only if things are produced can they be consumed. And that will give a way for the circular system to exist. But the thing is, um, what are we picking? Um, how are we looking at any product's value in its way? Um, are we looking at something which is extremely fast to consume, but without looking at the cost of um, what it's going on in the long term? I'll give you an example. So if you, uh, so if you take um, um, a plastic straw, and you take it to a small shop vendor and ask him to use that instead of a paper one, the first question they're gonna ask is, is this going to be um, uh, economical for me? If it's not gonna make business sense, then it's very difficult for anyone to consume or consider anything beyond that. So what's important is sure, it has to essentially um, be positive for the environment, but at the same time, it needs to be reused in such a way and brought it down so that people consider that, businesses consider that, which um, is really going to drive how we consume these products. Well, that's very interesting as well. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of like follow up with the exercise um, just to wrap up this kind of like exercise is pretty much we are going to do some voting. 
So pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you something about like two minutes and you're going to have something to vote so you can vote like which one you think like is the most important one, which post it represents the most important one for the concept of sustainability. So each participant is going to have like two votes and I'm going to give you something about like two minutes. So now for some voting, you will have like a message on your window saying like you want to vote. You say like, yes, you want to vote and then automatically will take you into the screen when you can pick the post you want to put your dot on. Uh, so you can start like voting now. So you will see like something like my screen, like with all the post-its around, and then you just can click on the plus to just uh, decide like you want to vote for that post-it or not. Can you see it on the screen? I think like, I think like everyone can see it. Honestly, Rod, it's extremely difficult to vote because the moment you read another post-it, it's like, hey, that's important as well. It, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. Like, it's like you you just vote <laughs> any one of them, uh, you know, they are all important. I think like so the idea is more like to just try to add your point to the, the one you think is more re representable for like the concept. It could be like, on, you only have like two votes, but just try to add them to something that uh, for you, like it's like more wrap up all the concept of sustainability. It's too hard to pick. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to pick. Exactly. Um, for example, I want to give you an example. For me, circular system is something that actually is just kind of like wrap up all the experience. And the other one should be, for example, for me, we like relate mindfulness. Well, I see that people voting, we have like 25 seconds less. Uh, yeah, probably if you're in an iPhone, it will be like very hard to vote on something. Uh, but if you are on your computer, that will be fine. Uh, let's have a look to the results, what the people vote on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is like advanced card sorting. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So I had like six people put their thought in circular system. Uh, people think also empathy is something very, very important. Uh, that's very, that's very nice. Long lasting, that's a very nice concept. Coexisting in this world. I'm not gonna read them all, but I wanna try to read like the top five. Build and create consciously and long longevity. Very good, very, very good. Um, from now on, uh, thank you very much for participating in the exercise. And I wanna just hand over to Nika, who is gonna carry on with part of his presentation. Thank you, Rod. So let's jump right in. Just give me one second and there you go. All right, so um, what we're gonna talk about over here is um, the pillars of sustainability. So like I earlier, mentioned um, social, environmental, and economic. These three uh, are really the pillars if you look at it. So uh, John Elkington in 97, he had mentioned about um, how we need to measure, how companies need to measure the value, not in terms of only the profit and loss, like the financial terms, but also social and environmental terms. So if you start looking at it, uh, social is nothing but it's all about people where um, we must be able to achieve um, equity and um, provision of social services like standard of living, education, equal opportunity. Uh, when it comes to the economic angle of it, the, the profitability of it, uh, we must be able to produce goods and services on a continuous basis. Uh, 
this was like in relation to what Rod mentioned about fast uh, fashion. Um, so yes, it it needs to consume. There has to be profitability because that's what is going to basically pay the way to develop more and more. Uh, but what's sort of coming as an attention is um, the care for the planet, where we must maintain a stable resource base without exhausting the non-renewable resources or exploiting the renewable ones. So all the decisions that are essentially being taken were looked into these three pillars equally, but the fact that environmental, because it does not have immediate gains, more often than not gets sidelined. So that's something which has to sort of be considered. And what we're going to do is, as we go through the presentation and we talk about some of the methods, you will notice how subtly environment gets at the center without being uh, without hurting the practices that we're doing today. So let's just go uh, a few years back, um, talking about data consumptions back in the days, uh, people people used to live um, with a variable energy supply, right? Where, um, you know, when the sun shines or the wind blows, um, that's when people would carry out their activities. But, and, and the fact is that even today, electricity gets cleaner only when these natural resources are available to us. So when the sun shines bright and uh, the intensity is, the grid intensity is done accordingly, consumptions start sort of coming down. Um, so at other times when the grid can be more polluting, um, uh, that's just essentially when the fossil fuels um, in energy increases. And what's more important is to understand what to consume at what point in time. Right now, the way we are consuming, it's like basically an unlimited supply, uh, do things whenever you want. And that is one of the things to be considered. Uh, Going forward, um, so like I said, when we are consuming, we do not like really keep things in mind. Uh, we just do as per you know our convenience. Uh, now, these smaller episodes, like the GIF that you're looking at right now, which sort of has made um, uh, rounds over the internet in 2019 sometime, uh, when, whether you're watching this, whether you are watching a series of Netflix, you're reading news online. Uh, these are not the obvious ways through which you are polluting the atmosphere. You must be like, you know, what am I doing? I'm just like watching this, right? But collectively, these digital services mean that the data center that power these, they need to go on. These servers are not necessarily located at locations which are closer to the nature. Um, though companies have started getting more and more conscious about this, but um, these servers generate a lot of heat, which requires, requires a lot of amount of energy, a lot of amount of energy to keep them cooler. So what happens is everything that we are consuming has an effect, directly, indirectly. Now, uh, some of the statistics show that uh, uh, the ICT, which is the Information and Communications Technology, um, that has started producing footprint, which is as close as the global air travel. Of course, that has reduced in the last couple of years, but um, of course, it's 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 going to bounce back. Uh, just to put things in perspective, um, we have uh, if if we compare the way we consume things, um, thirty minutes of Netflix is equivalent to like driving almost four miles. Now, of course, these things are basis some of the research, but then uh, it depends on the grid intensity at any given point in time. Um, the video, Despacito, right, has sort of um, consumed more than 900 gigawatt hours of electricity, and it, it continues. It's already crossed 7.5 billion views on YouTube, so imagine how many times this gets played. Um, and the other hot topic, which is about the Bitcoin, is um, uh, is you know, making rounds over the internet. Um, again, to put things into perspective, according to the Cambridge Index, one day of energy usage by mining Bitcoin, um, it, it can essentially produce enough electricity for a two-month supply for every commercial building in the US. 
so that's quite a lot. Um, now again, uh, there are multiple variables that basically put this um, make this number come true. But uh, yeah, the consumption is extremely high. So all in all, as of now, the global carbon emissions that the internet is producing, it is close to 4%, uh, which of course is rising with our um, hunger for consuming more data. But uh, what they say is the ICT will be responsible for more carbon emissions in the next five years, um, more than any of the any country out there except for China and the US. Um, if we leave that, um, uh, as of today, internet is the seventh largest polluter, according to the ICT uh, readings that have been taken. So uh, how do we ensure that we do mindful consumption? So let me invite um, Liz into this, who will talk us through a couple of things about how to have this mindful practice and second, how to drive these values. Liz, over to you. Thanks, Nihal. Um, what I took away from that was that Despacito is killing the planet, so that's disturbing. And I can't watch cat videos <laughs> anymore. No, I'm kidding. But it, it is funny to think about our impact, right? And um, one of the statistics I came across was that 80% of all of the product related environmental impacts, right, are actually determined during the design phase. So that just says a lot about our responsibility and influence the designers, right? There is so much that we can do. I mean, there is so much that we can do to offset this, right? And I think um, to your point about that, you know, there it's twofold, right? I mean, there's the business and rethinking the business paradigms that we use, like the you know traditional business models, and then how we kind of look at the broader impacts of what we're doing as designers, more than just the designer, the code that's in front of us, like the server costs, the emissions of site performance, um, implementing lean practices and things like that as designers, systemizing our processes and, and thinking long term. So, um, so really, I think that first step is to um, just. Let me share my screen here. Um, it's to to say that in order to solve the problem, we have to see the problem first, right? And so the mindset of sustainability and holistic design for me really does stem from mindfulness. Um, it stems from that level of individual and collective awareness that we have, right? And that we are able to encourage and cultivate. I think for every product, business, team, right, this awareness sits on a spectrum um, and, and a spectrum of action about it as well. And so I think it's really about coming to that understanding of where we are on that spectrum and then knowing that just in general, like every relationship that we have, everything that we do, it's, it is an extension of who we are, right? It's, it's how we see the world. It's how we think through and react to problems and then ultimately how we show up to solve them. And so for me, mindfulness is definitely at the core and the heart of that, being able to cultivate these things and developing that awareness. And, you know, that's because mindfulness really, it, it takes us, right? It moves us from that place of reactive judgment to proactive discernment, right? And reactive judgment is, is kind of that automatic labeling of this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. It's never as simple as watching a cat video or listening to Despacito is going to kill the planet. Um, so that proactive discernment is just the practice of noticing the thing that is occurring, noticing its context, noticing that it has these properties that exist and, and this thing might have um, aspects of being dangerous, but also opportunities that are present here. And you can see how that proactive discernment, right? It carries like a very different energy, a different weight to it. And I think that's really the kind of energy that we need to tackle these, you know, complex, wicked problems that we're facing. And, you know, just to have that grounding, to bring about that change, to, to be kind to our shortcomings when we don't do as well as we'd like um, being sustainable or, or developing the habits that we need. And, and being able to nonviolently communicate with people and, and understanding the systems that we're working in. Um, and one thing that um, someone also brought up in one of the stickies was do no harm, right? And I think that it's, it's an interesting um, point to make is that we're always trying to hopefully do no harm, but at the same time, it's understanding that we're always causing harm, right? It's a very complex system and it's always about trade-offs. Um, 
And I think a lot of the times as designers, when we are problem solving, what we are trying to do, as Nihal mentioned, was to make things more convenient, obviously, for users to make things easier. But sometimes that can be a myopic view because we tend to conflate things being more convenient with things being better. And sometimes that's not always the case. I mean, think about the amount of waste produced from fast fashion or emissions from cars to be able to get everywhere quickly or, you know, the ridiculous amount of excess packaging from our Amazon orders being able to come to us right away. Um, and so it is just thinking about the trade-offs and the balance. This image sparked something for me. Um, it sparked an essay that I wrote, and I'd love for you guys to, to tell me in the chat, what do you kind of, what do you think when you see this? The caption on it was amazing user experience design. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to um, just, what's your first reaction when you think of this? I mean, it definitely seems very convenient, right? And I guess the concept is that you can reach in and turn on the hot water and, and let it get warm before you, you have to step inside the shower. Um, my kind of initial reaction was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so much waste, right? It's just, it's giving you that opportunity, although it's convenient, it's not necessarily better to have that water running. And I, I also think just from, um, a psychological perspective, we need to put ourselves into difficult situations to with the right intention to prime ourselves to be able to handle those things right. And so always being too comfortable too convenient, we can see has had detrimental impacts on you know the environment and and larger systems and. Um, in, in an essay that David Perel wrote um, entitled The Microwave Economy, he says, the trade-offs of making the world more efficient are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. And, you know, that's that's an interesting point, right? It's like we don't realize how we've kind of gotten here, and sometimes it's it's hard to get out of it now. It's hard to let go of some of the habits we have. And I think one of the things that really helps us is to define our guiding principles, right? And, and that means how can we move um, from long term values right away from from short term gains just be moved by our long term values, you know, rather than our short term gains. And I think this is so important because this is what we need to remind ourselves of when things get difficult, which they, you know, inevitably will. Um, it's going to be our North Star as a designer, you know, what are your values that are not tied to monetary success or material things? What are those bigger things that are important to you? And um, let, 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 let me know in the chat, right? Like one of your kind of values and why. And like, for example, one of mine is just kind of like growth over progress, because sometimes progress is hard to come by. Sometimes I will spend a very long time trying to figure out how to do something or maybe to do something a little bit more sustainably, right? Rather than just getting it done. And sometimes that means I'm not going to check things off my to do list. But in the long run, will it contribute to my growth, my evolution to the type of person that I want to be, you know, will spending extra time creating this design system now save me time and resources and, you know, collaboration with my team in the long run, that kind of stuff, you know, maybe I'll sing Despacito to my husband in the kitchen instead of watching it on YouTube. I don't know, you know, whatever it is, um, I think it's about developing those habits and values. And if you're a business, right, how will you act on that? How will you encourage that culture at your company? Um, from founding three startups, I know one thing for sure that is always constant, and that is absolutely everything is going to go south. And without those values and your mission, when that happens, you either want to throw in the towel or you're very easily influenced by potentially less ethical ways of, um, you know, getting out of a predicament. And so, you know, there are three big things that happen as you grow as a company or even as you progress in your career as a designer. Um, and that is that there is increased risk, there is increased exposure and there's increased responsibility. And so really it's about how will we plan for these lesser of two evil decisions that we're going to be faced with, right? No path is going to be perfect. There will always be a, a bit of harm done on some side, but how can we minimize that and reduce that? Um, have you thought about this in your business model? Are you strategizing and making room for that in R&D and this kind of thinking and collaboration in your team? Because that takes energy and space. We're not always just, you know, checking things off and moving things to the complete board and stuff like that. So sometimes it is just being mindful um, of your values and, 
and and needing that perspective right to impact and, and kind of contribute to change. And so one thing that definitely gives me hope, though, that I've seen happen many times over, and this is a quote by the um, famed chemist and Nobel laureate Ilya Prigozhina, and he says, when a complex system is far from equilibrium, small islands of coherence in a sea of chaos have the capacity to shift the entire system to a higher order. And, you know, that's just to say that, yeah, we have a huge task ahead of us to improve our sustainability practices and our awareness and mindfulness about this stuff. But every little small thing that each of us can do with that intention, it has the power to shift the whole. And, um, you know, that's something that Tracy knows a lot about. So I'm going to give it to her because, you know, she is actively putting this stuff into action and measuring the results. And um, yeah, so I'll have you uh, take that over, Tracy. Thank you, Liz. That's truly inspiring for all of us. Um, now that we have already um, been exposed to the problem and facing the problem, um, what are the actions we can take um, to solve the problem? Uh, I am going to share my screen. Um, Liz, if you don't mind, stop sharing. Okay. I give me a second. I am having some security thing. Um, okay, uh, so maybe Liz, you can continue sharing. Um, I think I have some problem on my side. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, now that uh, we know about the problem, what are the actions we can take to solve this problem? Um, I want to ask my panelists here, um, when we talk about sustainable um, products or sustainable brands, what are the things that came into your mind? What are the brands or names or anything? Okay, I can go first. Mm. Um, um, I think like the, I mean, in terms of brands, just try to think like uh, brands that are like actually they are like customer facing because probably they have like more pressure from the audience and like from the customers to just try to like take action in those kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have like a few examples like we have seen like for example Allbirds that is a New Zealand company mm -hmm. um, it started like working on towards like those kind of goals. Yeah. And also you might find like another ones like Google, I think like trying to reduce the emission of like the footprint. Uh, so I guess it's like, cause, cause like we, they have like more pressure for like the consumers so they, they are like, actually they need to take an action. I mm -hmm. think like that is like the first kind of like, when I try to think, I, I think they are most like user facing. What do you think Liz about it? Yeah, I mean, you know, there are a lot of different ways that I think these companies are supporting sustainability. Shopify is one that encourages through their sustainability funds businesses that are kind of mounting this fight against climate change. So they're putting money into supporting that. Salesforce is another one. I mean, here in San Francisco, they're very active in local structures that they're building, as well as programs and things like that. They just recently released Sustainability Cloud. Um, so customers can now actually track their scope three emissions, their value chain emissions you know, purchased goods and, and business and travel and stuff like that and, and measure their carbon footprint, right? Mm -hmm. And then from the UX perspective, I know there are quite a few SaaS apps and stuff like that that are just, their UX designers are focused on adding in these little moments inside of the interactions to encourage users to actually, you know, take the more sustainable choice. Like if, if there, um, there was a great article, I will uh, share another resource that I have with you all as well in the chat, but it was an example of how you can say like if you're ordering takeout, maybe have an option on there to request that you don't um, provide plastic utensils that maybe you're, you know, you're going to use your own utensils at home anyway. Yeah. So having those types of thoughts along with, you know, your accessibility considerations and that sort of thing. And um, I want to give Tracy some time to talk more about her stuff as well. But um, I want to come back to a checklist that I'm going to provide you guys in a little bit to kind of think through some of these things. Thanks. Uh, can I add one? 
Sorry, can I add more, one more point? Um, more, um, I was thinking also about this as well. Is because I feel like a lot of good practices about like companies taking action to just move forward to just reduce the footprint. Also, the other day I found out like there is a few companies that are like trying to like mask it up, or, like try to like cover the kind of like the footprint, like for greenwashing. Example, I found out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I saw like Stripe the payments. So I was like finding they're like doing something for footprint and the reduce the footprint. And actually the only stuff they are doing is they say like they are like taking action, but what they are doing is they are allowing to the customers at the moment of the payment to just donate 1% of the, of the purchase to just reduce the footprint. Mm. What is actually is more like a commercial strategy. It's not actually, they are not taking action to reduce their servers or like the footprint internally. So they are like, say like, if you donate the 1%, actually you will like contribute to like reduce the footprint of, of our company. And, but they are not trying to do anything internally to just take action in the same kind of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard about that. And um, it's, it's always a good first step to um, like, create awareness for uh, different, like, especially consumers today. We know about sustainability, but we don't know what are the actions we can take um, to make it happen. Um, so before I dive more deep into the examples, I want to clarify some terms that we've been like using uh, interchangeably uh, that could be con potentially confusing to uh, a lot of people. Um, for example, carbon neutral. Uh, we've been talking about carbon neutral, but what really it means is that um, any carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere from a company's activity is balanced with an equivalent amount that is being removed. Um, the concept is like I have emitted um, a ton of CO2 and then I plant, uh, I'm contributing money to uh, offset all those amount of CO2. It's like you do something bad and then you do something equally good to offset it. So carbon neutral is usually some of the first step um, for a lot of clients to take um, as the their first, first foot into sustainability because it's much easier to um, execute on. And a next step into uh, sustainability is actually called uh, climate positive possible, uh, climate positive or carbon negative. Um, that means that the activity goes beyond achieving net zero carbon emission to create an environmental benefit by removing additional carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It's um, some common practices is like, um, I can look at my current footprint and I can do a forecast of my next year's um, uh, potential emission. And then I can find ways to optimize my supply chain or optimize the way I source my material to reduce that carbon emission so that I can achieve carbon negative. And the next step after that is called net zero carbon or carbon free. That means uh, no carbon was emitted from the get-go. Um, so no carbon needs to be captured or offset. So that would rely on the company to be reliable, 100% on renewable energy. Um, I know a lot of companies has been uh, working on making their facilita uh, facilita uh, facilities to be 100% uh, carbon neutral. Next slide. Um, so those are some examples of sustainable brands that you potentially have been heard about. Um, taking Pantagonia as an example. Uh, next slide. In their recent uh, sustainability report, they have uh, publicly committed to be carbon uh, neutral by 2025, and 100% of their facilities' electricity usage will be uh, by renewable resources. And next slide, um, Google, for example, like Rod has mentioned, uh, they have been carbon neutral since 2007. They are actually the first runner um, in the digital world to be carbon neutral. Um, and they also promise to be carbon free by 2030. That's a big step um, for Google. And anytime you use Google Meet, um, it, they offset their emission for you. Um, Allbirds, like um, Rod also mentioned, um, this is some um, initiatives they have started to invest into its sustainability. Um, they invest into programs that supports uh, regenerative agriculture, renewable materials, and also responsible energy. 
Um, Everlane is a brand that I personally really like. Um, they have been offering uh, programs for a uh, consumer to offset the shipping from the warehouse to their home by just a very little amount. It's less than a cent to, to offset your carbon emission. And how could a company to get started if you are a startup or if you are running a sustainability initiative of your company? What are the steps you can get started? So first of all, you can find the data resource through either your carrier or your service provider. Then you can use some existing uh, calculation tool on the market um, to calculate your carbon emission. And then after you understand your carbon footprint, you can try to identify the opportunities to reduce your emission. For example, generally speaking, um, air it has 47, 47 times more emission than ocean freight. So if you can do more optimization upfront and move your goods more through ocean rather than air, you can gradually reduce your carbon emission. Um, and then the next step is just to implement those changes across the team and continuously monitor the impact. Um, those are the things that a company can do at their level, um, but there are also a lot of things individuals can get started. I'll let Niha go through the uh, points that individuals can get started. Thank you, Tracy, that was uh, insightful. Let me share my screen. So as we've seen um, how really the impact happens and what we can possibly do about it, it all boils down to uh, what can we do as um, individuals, designers, or businesses? Um, so if you look at it, there are many steps that are beyond our reach um, in terms of whether calculating the grid intensity or getting started with things like that. It's in fact, if you go search for calculators, you're not going to get easy tools, except for the fact that where you're living, um, how much uh, meat do you consume, or for example, how much, you know, uh, what's your commute time like, distance like, but uh, it really doesn't boil down to simple day-to-day -day things that we do that can really make an impact. Uh, so in the first place, I feel uh, if you have to build carbon aware experiences as designers and as businesses building digital products, I think we have to sort of start building the awareness to begin with. So <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example about uh, Adva. Uh, this is an application earlier I mentioned about the company Olam, the Singapore based company. Um, we are actually helping them out um, build this application from scratch. Um, this is essentially towards helping uh, individuals be aware of uh, their utilization and uh, uh, take smaller steps towards um, helping the environment. Now that is about either going vegan for a day or um, using the stairs instead of elevators, so on and so forth. But uh, all in all, I think uh, if we sort of start getting an accurate or real-time information about uh, the consumption that we are having and the emission that we are uh, leaving, then I think we'll be aware of uh, what really we are leaving behind. Um, also, the fact that there has to be visibility about um, not just calculate, but at the same time, let us know uh, what really is being accumulated. For example, we are on this call right now. What if there was a way to for us to all understand, given the fact that we are somewhere around 63 participants as of now, um, most of you are not on video, but the ones who are, sure, they are consuming more, uh, they are emitting more carbon, but then uh, can there be a real-time way of understanding what are the implications? And then once we know, probably then we'll be able to even take some action onto that. So it's more of a mindset than anything. Um, and uh, with the advent of having tools to be able to help us be aware about this, uh, that will basically be a good starting point. Second is, um, this is just a thought. Um, what if there was a way to <clears throat> have a carbon forecast? Um, so it's, see, nobody likes a bad experience or like, probably 
laggy videos, right? Uh, we can we can complain the infrastructure company, but you really cannot blame the nature. So similarly, how we schedule our uh, daily lives using you know weather forecasts? Uh, can we start using services according to the grid intensity? Um, and these could be activities that can be more of alternatives, but uh, there could be <clears throat> ways of consuming, like Liz was earlier talking about. Uh, YouTube video, uh, but sort of going audio only mode, or maybe just singing, right? Uh, so can there be a nature controlled internet, uh, which drives our decisions about what we do? Um, so basis the weather, we get the experience. Um, and if you want, if you're talking about experiences, then could there be really thoughtful alternatives, right? So <clears throat> there, here's an experience experiment uh, uh, that uh, Lucy has uh, has done. Uh, this was roughly about a couple of years back where what she does is she basically experiments with the fact that uh, under low data mode, instead of seeing each other's face, you uh, the callers transmit the touch over the internet. There have been many apps which basically use technology um, whether the haptic feedback or other modes through which you connect to people, right? So there could be these really thoughtful alternatives um, that can make the experience better. Um, and uh, in in times where, say, you're reading uh, an article, maybe you have a gracefully downgraded content. So instead of looking at an image um, which is high definition, there could be a graphical version of it which uses um, uh, lesser colors and uh, uh, lesser pressure on the experience that we are putting in. And then um, if not that, can there be alternatives to um, uh, to suggest over there? So in case if you're having a video call and then you happen to be at a grid intensity, which does not really um, sustain it for a longer time, then can you suggest other means through which you can uh, let the person connect but at the same time, give an alternative way to which they can uh, make the connection. So these experiences are not really thought through or not thought through from a sustainability perspective, but that's something which we as designers can start considering uh, one bit to make that change happen. Now, these are just a few things. Other than that, there are multiple more things that one can consider. And these, some of them are trivial, but really they, they really do add up. For example, <clears throat> talking about use of custom fonts, right? Now, multiple typefaces mean they add weight, they increase the energy usage, and of course, go towards the slow performance. And I'm sure that you guys must have experienced about how <clears throat> Google fonts clearly tell you about the performance that, that has an effect on the energy consumption. You talk about the colors, um, the darker colors, they, they require less energy, uh, to eliminate as opposed to any other one. In fact, dark mode, what they say is the, it, it sort of extends um, the life of a phone's battery. So that helps in a way. Um, the way we plan our user journeys when we design, um, how can we sort of uh, be aware of dark patterns and avoid the ones that basically lead uh, the users for a longer journey? Um, and the Jedi practices, which is applicable for product design as well as businesses, right? Uh, how do we incorporate um, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion when we are uh, building these experiences to make it more accessible and equitable? Talking about the other four, those are mainly towards um, building your businesses. So uh, does a business have an impact business model in place that is essentially to cope with um, volatility, any disruptions that are happening or any unexpected consequences um, that come and hit a business when such things happen. So that's there. Uh, some of the businesses, some of the brands do follow reporting um, sustainability um, efforts. But in my opinion, I mean, earlier we spoke about the brands who are, um, who are doing their bid. But I think in my opinion, it has to be the exact opposite. We shouldn't be really, uh, it shouldn't be a situation where we only know a few brands who are doing their bit. It should be the other way around where we talk about 
these are the brands who are not doing it and really every business every individual really need to make an effort uh, and that has to be a part of how business models are being made um other than that about you know having some policies about not flying unnecessarily or even um getting certifications from um third party like there's b corp there is uh, one person for the planet fair trade so there are external business certifications that can help you understand where you are um there are products like uh, watershed which goes to extreme details and then like our friend uh, dude with science says um it's good to have uh, social media outages that happened just a couple of days back so i'm sure that definitely brings an impact um in a lot of ways so uh, we have a lot of references uh, we can share with you um these links um you can go research it yourself um understand a little bit more and uh, uh through that uh, uh, before we get into q and a um liz uh, i remember you mentioned about sharing some list so let me let me pause over here stop my screen and hand it over to you yeah so um i have actually put together a little resource for everyone that you can download i'm going to put the link in the chat and for those of you that use Notion, um, it's just a, a list of a lot of the things that we talked about, and it's organized in a few categories of how you can kind of do a little exercise to, divide, to define your values and some actions that maybe you can commit to regularly and build a habit around sustainability and then ways that you can encourage others. And it's um, there's a personal checklist of little things you can do, a design checklist of things that you can think through when you're doing your work, whether that's UX research or you, you know user interface design or, um, and then also a business checklist. So thinking through progressive business models, um, different things you can do about understanding your, your size, your ideal size as a business and things like that. And a few publications about sustainability and some deep dives and some great books that we also have all you know read and recommend that you read if you're interested in learning more about this stuff. So check that link out in the chat. Cool. Uh, thank you, everyone. With that being said, uh, I think we can open um, it to the audience. Um, any questions uh, you guys have about the practices that we spoke about or some of the methods that we um, highlighted? So feel free. Please ask questions. Either put it in the chat window or you know go ahead um, and ask any one of us. And yeah, sorry, I think I pasted the wrong um, link in there. So let me make sure I have the right one for you guys. Oh. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so you can click on that and check that out. So yeah, feel free to come up on video and uh, or unmute yeah. yourself and just raise your hand and then we'll um answer any questions you have or clarify any terms or jargon or or anything that we've talked about. Oh, any issue you are having in your practices and it's just very difficult to come up front like how do you like for example try to face these problems in your current design studio as well like bringing like sustainability as well if you have any question please as Liz says just raise your hand or just write it in the chat and and in case if you don't have any question that's fine maybe you can share your story about how in smaller ways you have consciously put um any practice in place when you were designing or building a business that others can learn from yeah cool we have two questions um this is that we oh sorry i'm not quite sure how to pronounce your name ujaya dhar yeah yeah it's ujayan dhar okay. thank you yeah yeah so yes, uh, yeah so the thing is, I'm planning for my master's in uh, HCI and the topic of interaction design and everything. So it's a little bit of off topic. I know the topic is sustainable and everything. So it will come down to the basic thing and that. And the thing is, whenever we talk about HCI or interaction design or anything, because I got introduced to this domain after I read the book Design of Everyday Things, where Don Norman talks 
about the cognitive psychology and the designing where design is ubiquitous then why <coughs> everywhere i mean like when we talk about ui it comes down to android designing and ios apps and websites because i believe the dashboard of tesla the uh, steering wheel uh, or anything even an f1 car the console the f1 drivers that drive that requires user experience so taking it to and mapping it to an sustainable thing in if, if in the future i want to design dashboards of futuristic vehicles how can i keep the sustainable thing and conservation for the future and everything in mind how can i map those two worlds together because i believe automobile is one of the biggest impact that gives rise to pollution and oh, what not to the effect of i mean it affects the environment in some other other way uh, carbon emissions and everything so how can a small impact like even a button if i'm designing for a, a steering wheel a call button or a mute anything anything how can a small thing can impact i know it's little bit of a the question has the topic has astrayed a little bit but i am try to map in something like that okay yes. no uh, ujain in fact let me answer that question for you uh, i'm glad that you asked that um i'm bringing it over because um like i think i earlier mentioned um just a couple of months back i i had a um an extremely long conversation with don and his wife julie uh, at their residence and um, so one of the topics the reason why we actually met was primarily because um i was sharing a few things with him and uh, he's like yeah sure you know let's let's meet let's just talk about this uh see one of the things that uh, he has been talking about apart from the fact that he's written the book um uh the whole perspective about designers and human centered design in itself needs to be rethought um see the fact that we talk about human centered design in itself is i'm sorry but a little selfish right um it needs to sort of go beyond that and that's something he himself also has been talking about it um in fact um uh, uh when you mentioned how can you as a designer um make that change or bring that effect with one button right yeah. uh, i i think uh, instead of looking at it that way that one button i think you need to look into it um of what's the overall impact like in a sense when you're designing an interface try and question about where is it fitting in in the entire ecosystem so don't look at the interface as pixels look at that interface as who is going to basically um make that you know click that button uh, what's okay. really going to happen from an operational perspective tracy mentioned something in the chat about uh, you wanting to combine your amazon packages right if you look at it if you happen to be a designer and you were the one telling people or um uh, pursuing them to really go for that option instead of you know getting your amazon packages delivered like every single day in a given week yeah. how are you going to basically consume um that knowledge about the problem that is there and then put it in the interface so that you know there's a positive um effect of people going for that choice about getting everything on that amazon day so that everything gets um um put together without that ujain it's extremely difficult um to come out of the interface design practice so as designers i think we all i think we all should start looking beyond ux and start looking at um uh aspects bigger than just the product in itself and look at the overall ecosystem including business and environment yeah, yeah. Uh, just to that point um there's a a few resources here as well in an essay that i wrote uh, about this and this kind of anthropocentric point of view where user centered definitely then tends to be human people centered and sometimes that leaves out other things like animals like the planet like nature right mm -hmm. and so it's mm -hmm. having that bigger holistic perspective that's important and i think it 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 happens in pieces right like you're going to 
strategize eventually, but little by little, like you first understand, well, you know, what's the web hosting that our website has, and then how much energy are we expending here? And then as you kind of sort of measure these things and look at your pillars and what's in each of those pillars and you kind of are able to strategize and theory craft about like how can we how what's one thing that we can do that's the smallest that has the most impact for us as a company right over all of these pillars so yeah absolutely that's a really good question by the way thank you for asking yeah. and sharing yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 okay thanks a lot and one thing like uh do you really think that design should be made you big yes I mean, I don't think, I, I mean, I think that it should be made ubiquitous, but what I have, I'm looking in the Indian job market recently because people ask for UI designers and they're expecting programming and there is a little off thing, things that are going on because. Well, you're uh, just they, talking, talking to the wrong people in that case. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, because, it's definitely, yeah. definitely the, shouldn't the, be like that. Yeah. yeah. The reason, the reason I got attached to the topic of HCI is because I read a research paper by Patty Mays and Pranav Mistry's Six Sense Technology, and I was uh, awed. And I did an IEEE research paper on that. And because Pranav Mistry strictly says that a design is ubiquitous, and I believe that interaction design should be the same on a very global level. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. In fact, I just want to add like one quick point over here before we take the next question. Um, because I think you touch upon um, a topic which can like really go on for like an hour. But okay. uh, this is a story about, uh, I think in nine, this was 1850s, if I'm not wrong, uh, where um, an architecture was being built in Paris. There was a public library, if I'm not wrong. I don't really recollect the name of the architect. But at that time, he was basically talking about um, what's going to be the impact when people start stepping into um, this public space because you don't know who the users are and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. So one of uh -huh. the things that he has written in the book, he's like, I don't just want to think about people who are coming in, but I also want to think about the nature, meaning the trees that are going to be planted around the public uh, library because you, know, you, you, you grow mushrooms and literally he says, mushrooms have their own plans. Uh, you cannot like really control the nature. Um, along okay. with that, the finishes that we are using, uh, the materials that are being used to create the interiors, um, if you have non-reflecting services, it's, it's going to echo. So, uh, you know, you, you cannot only think about humans, but also things that are non-human, which definitely has an effect on how we um, uh, interact with each other. Cool. We have another question here from Sonia. Hi, everybody. So, um, hi. So I have uh, one give and then I have one question. So um, yeah. my background before coming into UX was I was a wellness manager. I worked a lot with wellness teams. So in terms of the business, there was always like the corporate social responsibility and things like that. But there's also all these different departments that they're kind of trying to get at the same thing. We're trying to make sure that we have these really good environments for people to do their best work. But a lot of times we don't cross collaborate or partner or co-design with each other. So I just want to encourage everybody to think about how you can do that as well. Because again, if, if we're thinking about cat videos and the downstream impact of that, that's not something I would usually think about with the data centers. So I can bring that back to circle and kind of go back with that. I think about things like community gardens and local foods and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think this is really good to like, just start thinking a little more broadly about it. Um, and then my question, um, you had mentioned the Jedi principles and accessibility. And a lot of times in accessibility, um, we're thinking about things as an afterthought. And this sounds like it's kind of like the same kind of afterthought. So if we can get both of those parties at the table, you know, when we're thinking about it with accessibility, with also like, what are these impacts that it's gonna have on our um, metrics and how many miles of something that's gonna have to travel and all this kind of stuff, that it seems like it will like bring it full circle. But also if we're thinking about net zero, if we know somebody has dyslexia, that's gonna be on our call. For example, I have dyslexia. 
So I have to raise my hand and be part of this. And I know that the video is going to take more time. Is there a way to offset with the chat, you know, that we know we're going to expect this so we can then include more people on the call and still operationalize those principles and make sure everybody gets a chance to participate or have a similar uh, comparable inclusive design experience. Yeah, that's awesome, Sona. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it's a wonderful it's point. Really, really wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting, right? Like doing exercises like what we did in Miro and, and having metaphors to like cat videos and stuff like that. It is one of those things that I think brings teams together when they are, you know, wanting to relate and make it more relatable on the same topic. So, um, yeah, but absolutely. I think those are really important things to consider. And thank you for inviting me to the session. I appreciate it. Thank you for being present and bringing yeah. your thoughts. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you, appreciate it. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing your story behind it. It's just very, very important. And I think like you did like an amazing contribution to the team. Though we are open for questions over here, but at the same time, I'm just going to put in the chat window um, links for all four of us um, in case you want to connect with um, one or all, yeah. just feel free. Um, that way I think we can have broader conversations. Yeah. Um, so any other question? I think probably we just covered up most of it. Yeah, if you guys think of any other questions, connect with us. I think most of our LinkedIn um, profiles mm -hmm. are on that as well. So, and we're on yeah. ADP list. Most of us, yeah. you can probably book a session with yeah. us and talk more about this stuff, you know, um, in the future yeah. as well. So, yeah, there's so much more to talk about. And we're definitely thinking yeah. about um, doing a recurring session, maybe regularly yeah. on this kind of thing so we can dive deeper, right? So, if you guys would be interested yeah. in that, you know, let us know. Yeah, probably. If we're wrapping up, probably we can share like your last thoughts uh, before to just close the session. Oh, we yeah. have a question. Oh, great. Daniel? Yeah, hello everyone. Hi, yeah. hi Daniel. Hi. Um, so um, I really appreciate this um, presentation. I think it has really been um, an eye opener to a lot of um, information when it comes to sustainability. And so currently I'm thinking of um, solutions that um, designers, we can actually um, put out out there to solve and to contribute to this um, movement of sustainability. And um, one question that I wanted to ask is that, what are some of the things that we should include in our um, design process mm -hmm. whenever we are working on, um, let's say a project to impact sustainability? Are there particular things that we should um, be mindful of in the design process, maybe like um, some things that we should take notes of when we are doing a user research or when we are thinking of going outside pixels and interacting with the physical world. Thank yeah, you. Um, Daniel, great question. Check that checklist that I just linked to in the chat because I have a whole list of actual things that you can just go through and audit on your own websites or in your own design process. Nihal mentioned some things in his slides about, um, you know, using fonts that reduce page load times, choosing web safe fonts are important, um, only install the necessary ones, audit your existing websites. There's actually a great site as well um that you can check like if you have a portfolio or you have a website you can actually go here and put your url in and it will kind of tell you how clean and how green your website is and how much energy that it's using so that's something that you can do in the audit process um, yeah there there are lots of things that you can take into consideration and a lot of that al aligns and overlaps with the user-centered processes that we already do making the user journey really efficient and some of those things in that slide that um Nihal had up before. If you want to put that slide up too, Nihal, you can. That's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, uh, that checklist is, is really great. Um, other things like, you know, prioritizing colors that use less energy, making sure you've uh, thoroughly designed your dark mode version of your website or your app, because that, again, uses less energy. Um, compressing your media file sizes, right? Making sure you're optimizing your videos and image sizing before you're embedding them on your website. Um, 
you know, reusing user data instead of requesting it again, because every one of those requests, you know, it asks for more energy, it takes more resources, for example, like in, you know, during the shopping cart process, make sure your code is um, clean and scalable, talk about this stuff with your devs, make sure they're caching things where appropriate. You know, there's endless things that we can um, do and on all these things I just listed off are in that checklist. So make sure you um, you grab that. And anything else all you right, guys? Thank you. I... Okay. I think probably we can- So guys, yeah, yeah, yeah just in the interest of time, what we can do is, um, just in the interest of time, what we can do is, um, let's just, uh, you know, all of us, um, um, Rod, Tracy, Liz, let's just quickly, you know, give our, um, our two cents um, and uh, uh, any other questions we can, um, you know, we've shared the link so that, you know, folks can get in touch with us. But uh, Rod, why don't you go ahead um, and uh, give your last thoughts right now? Uh, yeah, so pretty much I will say like, um, I have like an, a strong idea in terms of like stuff we can do in terms of like a businesses and also like individuals. I think they're like two pathways. In terms of like businesses, it's more like the strategy and just take like the initiative to just start like put it on the table, the conversation about the sustainability. I think like design is we, we are like have to be like empowered to bring the conversation as well. Uh, it's just like small steps, just make the difference. And then I think like one by one, it's, it's just start like adding up to the end result. And like an individuals, I will like you, everyone to just uh, kind of like stay away from your screens. Uh, it's just more like you just try to do like something for the planet and just try to stay away. Uh, I think like this was like the kind of like idea I came to after reading this book for like, it's like ruined by design. Uh, what is exactly talked uh, about like the idea that like uh, designers, we are like kind of like, we are like making the world worst because actually the decision we are taking, they're like implicated in other people. In this case, the book just talk about like psychology and how like, for example, we're like increases like increasing like a suicide rate in kids. Uh, that is like where personally, I don't work in projects uh, that involves kids uh, because I don't want to like be responsible. I don't want to like take part of something that will be like, uh, will care like bad behavior for kids. But in terms of like sustainability, I think like, like designers, we have to stay away from the screen. I think like when we start like working in systems and problems, it's just better to have like a fresh mind. Uh, and a few stuff like I start like doing to just stay away from the screen is pretty much like, for example, uh, now in the pandemic, I go, I got like Lego bricks because I just want to play with it and then just keep my mind busy away from the screen. So I don't have to like be on my phone all the time uh, and just try to pull up my phone away when I'm working. So I don't have to check it all the time and I'm not consuming a uh, service. And then finally, another decision I took is like drive less. So I got an electric scooter and I try to use it like for, to commute for across the city. Uh, so I think like just a small kind of like actions also involve like better results for the planet. And what do you think, Tracy? What would be like your two cents? Yeah, I am just really glad that so many people are interested is interested in this topic and stay with us for this entire 90 minutes. Um, I think the very first step for us to uh, do is to create awareness. And I think we have done this first step and now it's everyone's responsibility to spare uh, spread, spare more awareness to your friends, your family, and keep uh, in mind that um, everything has an impact and uh, we should do whatever we can do to um, reduce the impact we have on this planet. We're in this together. Yeah, Let's. that's awesome, Tracy. Yeah, Thank I definitely, you, I thought we'd probably be the only ones here, just the four of us hanging out. I'm surprised so many people showed up to talk about this uh, <laughs> this topic. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy and encouraged to see that people are thinking about this and designers really, you know, are considering this in their process. So yeah, I mean, to recap a lot of what was said, you know, practice mindfulness, what Rod said, get out and get out away from your screen as much as you can. I know that's not easy, but um, keep it a top of mind, right? Cultivate that non-judgmental observation of things and try to give yourself that space between your reactive judgments and your proactive discernment. And, and that that's a part of cultivating empathy, right? Being able to see things and step outside of yourself and um, define your long-term values, right? Audit and measure where you are now. 
um, and decide where you want to be and what steps you can take to get there for you and your teams and your businesses. Um, think about the broader impacts of your design, you know, more than just what's in front of you. And, um, you know, just be kind to one another. And thank you guys for showing up. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you everyone for uh, showing up for the session. There's one thing I definitely would want to add. There's only one simple way of getting started with this. And this is from our own experience. Start searching for what is uh, sustainability and carbon aware um, practices. And I'm sure you'll get more resources than possibly we all can give you right now in one Zoom session. So at least make that first step, browse for it. Uh, and I'm sure that you will start getting more and more things. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for coming.